My name is Nitesh Sharma. I'm one of the mentors with the Study Buddy team. I've been with the team for more than three years now, and I'm helping a lot of students with how to solve the questions, how to clear the exam, what are the different strategies they can use while solving questions. So as the exam is getting more difficult, that's why I'm here to discuss with everyone a few of the strategies that you guys can use while solving questions. So we're going to start with those. So let's see. So we will go to the first question. So the first important strategy that I suggest to all my students to use and what even I used to use is when you read the question, understand each and everything properly. There are few different things that you need to know while reading a question. One is what are the important points that they are mentioning? Second thing, what are the distractors? There are some distractors in the question which usually guides you towards the wrong answer. That is one of the trap which is made. And the best strategy is to always avoid that and look for the keywords. Now, if we go to this question, so Tanya is a professional model with complaint of gradual onset of back pain. She tells you that standing and forward bending aggravates her symptoms, whereas resting in the makeup chair elevate them. So the first question in the vignette is bending backward with rotation to the right isn't painful. However, unilateral lumbar extension test is positive on the right side. What is Tanya's most likely diagnosis? So the first thing here, after you read the question, don't directly jump to the options. Read the question, see what all things are important, what all points are taking you in a direction, just interpret and then we'll go to the option. So with the question, the important things here is standing and forward bending is aggravating her symptoms. Resting on the chair means sitting is reducing the symptoms. Bending backward with rotation to the right isn't painful. So one spatial test is not painful. However, unilateral lumbar extension test is positive. So what is the diagnosis? Now with this, what I feel, it could be more of lysis because the bend, bending backward rotation is negative. That helps you rule out the facet joint arthropod. Then another thing, standing and forward bending. Now forward bending is aggravating pain. So this creates a confusion of could be a disc lesion as well, but sitting in the makeup chair is reducing. But standing is somewhere you also have extension movement, but that is also aggravating. So both bending and standing, both the movements are aggravating pain. So again, that thing is most commonly seen with spondylolysis or rhesthesis. So depending on this, now we will go to the option. So that is what I interpret after reading the question. Okay. So now when we go to the option, option A is L5, L4, L5 disc prolapse, spondylolysis, option B, option C, facet joint arthropathy, and option D is neurogenic claudication. So there is no information given in the question with, in terms with neurogenic claudication. So we can eliminate that as the first option to be eliminated. Facet joint arthropathy was again ruled out because extension and rotation was not positive. This prolapse is ruled out because both bending and extension, both is causing it. So see how just by reading the question, understanding the important words, we were able to eliminate three and the answer is spondylolysis. Now, the same thing. So you have all the information here from what all different book, different page number, how different things have been explained. Like spondylolysis, patient often have pain with extension and rotation of the lumbar spine. Pain will be aggravated with standing and bending forward and will reduce with sitting. This clearly is mentioned in detail. Unilateral lumbar extension test is used for differential diagnosis of spondylolysis. That was the exact test which was given in the question. 
the test is positive unilateral lumbar extension test got it next thing facet joint arthropathy pain will be will be reduced reproduced only after the addition of rotation component in the unilateral lumbar extension test so that is for facet joint which we already ruled out this prolapse pain increases with sitting and bending while reduces with extension. That is how we eliminated the option of disc prolapse. Neurogenic claudic claudication is associated with spinal stenosis. Sitting and bending forward both relieves symptoms. So it was exactly opposite to that. So how studying from the book, doing, doing the differential diagnosis helps. Okay, so that is the first strategy. Always you read the question, interpret what is given in the question, think in which direction it is taking you, take note down the important points and that will help you get to the right answer very easily. And this is a very good strategy. Initially, when you practice, you guys will find it difficult, but as you keep practicing it, gradually you will notice the speed of elimination and interpretation will increase and you will be able to solve the question in less time. So let's go to the second question in the same vignette. So question two, the vignette is the same. Question two says she visits you again in the clinic after three years and her symptoms have worsened. Now she also feels burning in her leg, in her lower leg while sleeping. During the examination, you find out that her L4 spinous process is anteriorly displaced relative to L5 spine and a bump is seen at the L5 spinal level. So what could be the diagnosis? Now the L4, so her symptoms have been worsened. Symptoms have worsened. She also feels burning in the lower leg. And there is L4 spinous process, which is anteriorly displaced in relation to L5, while there is a bump seen on L5. So this is typically directing you towards lysthesis now. So in lysthesis, what will happen? So what could happen now? So L5 options, L5, S1 dis extrusion, L4, L5 enterolysthesis, L5, S1 enter. So you know it is lysthesis. So extrusion is gone, Sherman's disease is out. So the, now the option where you are stuck is between L4 and L5 enterolysthesis and L5 S1 enter. Now there are two lysthesis given. Now how will, will you find out which one it is? So you go back to the question again. When you go back to the question, now this information, L4 spinous process is anteriorly displaced relative to L5 and a bump is seen at L5. So what is this explaining? Is the L4 spinous process has moved forward? Well, at the L5, there is a bump. So this guides you towards a lysthesis of L5 over S1, L5 enterolysthesis. Why L5, S1? Because at L5, there is sparse interarticularis fracture at both the sides. So the vertebral body moves forward while the spinous process stays behind. That what happens at L5, but at L4, as the whole vertebra is intact, the whole vertebra will move forward with the spinous process. So that is why you see L4 spinous process is anteriorly displaced relative to L5 and a bump is seen as L5. So your option should be L5 S1 enterolysthesis. So we'll like have a look at it. So you see this picture? How there is a pass interarticularis fracture at L5. So there, there is a lysthesis of L5. L5 has moved anteriorly in relation to S1 or the sacrum. But because of the fracture, only the vertebral body goes forward and the spinous process stays behind. Okay, while the L4, the whole vertebra along with the spinous processes move forward. So when you're palpating, you will see this is gone and then you see a bump. That is at L5. This is a very important concept. So the question could be both the ways. If they are mentioning 
where you will see the depression. So it will be at L4 or where you see the bump that will be at L5. Okay, and this is the exact reference for the same. Okay, everyone, are you guys getting it? So we will go to the next question now. Okay, so we'll solve the third question in the vignette. So that's the third one. Now, again, the same vignette, professional model complaining of pain. Which of the following should be done last? Now, this kind of question, where it says, which of the following? So now here you don't have, you cannot think of anything. So best thing is go to the option. Okay, multifidus training, set up, iliopsoas stretching or grade three PA glide. Okay, which of the following should be done last? So what do you guys think? What should be done at the end? Yes, everyone. Just reply in the chat box. So everybody is going with option D. Everybody is thinking of option D. Let's see. Can you guys see the options? So, now let's use the elimination strategy for this question. Okay, the first thing, multifidus training. So that is the first thing that you need to do. Okay, always in a spinal condition, always focus on segmental stability first. Along with, you also need iliopsoas stretching because there is an anterior pelvic tilt, so iliopsoas muscle always tends to get tight. So that's the next thing that you need to do. Okay, sorry. The third thing is sit-ups. So sit-ups, again, strengthening the abdominal muscles. So that after segmental stability, you go toward global stability. Option D says grade three PA glide. Now, that is something which should be contraindicated. Hypermobile area, this fracture, pars interarticularis. So option D is out. Now, they say which of the things should be done last. So a lot of you guys might be thinking, PA glide should be done at the last, but that is completely contraindicated. So we cannot use that. And the fracture cannot heal until the listhesis has been corrected. So these are the two things you'll do. And then, so initially you go for stretching, then segmental stability, then global stability. So option B should be the right answer here. See, so sometimes there are certain things which cannot be done, even those things are mentioned. So you always have to take care of what all precautions, what are the contraindications, 
the safety of the patients, all those things are very important. And accordingly, in such kind of question, we can use the elimination strategy. So now, let's see the explanation part. The setup should only be taught after the accomplishment of adequate flexibility and global stability in the spine. Multifidus and transverse abdominus are deep segmental stabilizers. The segmental stability, that's what I said. Iliosoa stretching plays a vital role in correcting the hyperlordotic posture. Great tree mobilization are strictly contraindicated as hypermobile segment. Okay. And also there is a fracture at the site. So this is how different strategies will help you guys ruling out the options and coming to the right answer. So always, we'll summar I'll summarize all the strategies again. So the first thing is always read the question properly. There will be sometimes the question is the main vignette and the sub question. So sometimes the sub questions are in relation to the main vignette. Sometimes they are not. So that is why reading question is the first important thing. If you think or miss anything, you might go wrong. Then interpret the question. Another important thing when you are interpreting the question, whatever information is provided in the question is more than enough. It happens with a lot of students when they are reading the question. As soon as you come to know what the topic is, everything related to that topic comes in your mind. And that is where unknowingly we tend to add something which is not given in the question. So those things should be avoided. Just focus on the questions. And this thing can improve much better with the more mock exams you solve the more question solvings you do. So similar kind, we have uh, in study buddy, we have four mock exams. We have our website, a separate website for the exams. It is called as studybuddyexams.com. I will show you about that as well. So this is our website. It says studybuddyexams.com. Over here, you can register as a new user. Click here, you can write your name, email address, everything, and you can register as a new user. So I already have mine, so I will. So always, every time you register, after the registration, every time you log in, you will be getting an OTP. So I've got mine. So then you. So this is how you have individual test and the combo test available here. Once you buy any mock exam, it will be visible under the all exam section. So you can select. So as I've already bought one, so it's not showing, it is showing exam two, three, and four. We have four mock exams. All the mock exams are with the PCE blueprint. They have all the questions with detailed explanation of all the rationals. Once you submit the exam, you can review the exam over here. So if you click on any exam, suppose I'm clicking, clicking exam two. So you see zero to 200, all the questions, it will show how much percentage you got. Then below here will be your graph showing in each subject, how much you're scoring. Then you can go to individual, questions whichever you want so you can click on any questions it'll load that one Uh, you can also click, so it's loaded, or you can click next for the next question or previous for the previous question. 
and when you once you buy the exam you can click here it'll ask you you want to start your exam Once you click, it'll take you to that page where you can start your mock exam. So it has, it has all the instructions. Once you click start now, your timer is here, it's gonna start. You have all the questions after you select, you, you do next, it will it'll turn green. That indicates you have answered that question. Now suppose you flag a question and then you do next, you see how the color changed. So these are the features which is usually there in the main PC exam. So we have tried to create something similar. Another thing, you can go to any question anytime and you can straight away answer that question. Suppose like because some students feel, okay, doing standalone is better. So if from 180, the standalones are starting, so they can go do the standalone first and then come back and start the vignette and at the end after you finish you can see all the questions which have been flagged and you can just go through and if you can read it again and if you want to change the answer you can do that so this is how we have uh, this is the website created for our students these are the exams which were only available to study buddy students now we have made it available to non-study buddy students as well Plus any of you, if you feel the whole course you want, so we have different courses available. The basic course is 449, which has the MCON package, two mock exams and two ethics, three mock exams and two ethics class included in that. While we have a package of 599, which has all the mock exams and all the ethics lectures available. Okay, so if you want to buy the mock exam, you can just go onto the website studybuddyexams.com and you can click and select whichever exam you want to start. Okay, so multi training, how to do? They can go and read about it from Kisner over there. They have given it in detail. So uh, I will not be helping here with this te teaching part because for that, you go and read from the book. That will be much help because there is a, a lot of things, a lot of concept behind that, that how you activate the muscle, how you take it at different level. Minimum percentage to clear the exam. Again, the minimum percentage, I would say, it varies from exam to exam. If the exam is easy, you need a higher percentage. You need to get more answers, right? If the exam is difficult, even with less answers going right, you can clear the exam. If you buy the full package of 599, then you don't have to buy any of these mock exams. Everything will be included in the package. So it, it each question is counted as one mark in the exam. And depending on how many you got right, that is how you'll get your score. So the exam is easy or difficult. That's a very difficult question to answer. So it, it depends like what are the different, like when there are straightforward questions, the exam is much more easier. When there are a lot of tricks used, a lot of uh, deep uh, concepts are used, that is why how you can say the exam is difficult. That you will get an idea once you give the exam. For in our exam, I can say you give exam one or you give exam three. You will see a big difference in your score itself. But why that difficulty level has to increase? Because after you give the exam, when you review it, the reviewing part is the most important. When you review it, you go through the rational in detail. It has the whole rational explained in the section it has references from which book to read and you can go and read from the book as well which further helps in clearing your concept and then when you go for the next mock exam you will score better how long to prepare it varies from person to person depending on how long you have not been in contact with the studies or how you have been in your clinical practice there are many different things it varies from two to three months to six months, I would say one year is too much time. At maximum six months should be more than enough, according to me. We have to practice more ethic questions. So in our exam, we have ethics questions as well with all the references and explanation in detail. That is where you can practice all the ethics questions. So reference book for different topic, there are different books. Like for muscular, you can say 
Kisner, Maggie, some topics from Dutton for Neuro Sullivan, some topics from Umfred for modalities, Cameron. So different books for uh, uh, cardiopulmonary, there'll be Reading Chung and Hilgus. Those are the books I can. Yeah, so in the previous question, it extension, extension and rotation. Pure extension is causing pain because of the listesis, uh, because of the pars intercalaris fracture. But when you add the rotation component in, in that, it puts more pressure on the facet joint area. So that is a specific test for facet joint. But only extension is something which is for the fracture of pars interarticularis, like spondylolysis. So that is why the extension rotation doesn't have pain. So when you're doing just extension, you will have pain, but as you go in the rotation component, the pain will go away. Okay, guys. So I will finish it this way and you can go to the website, look at it. You just have to register as a new user once you register. Yeah, and just remember your email address and the password. And every time you log in, you will be getting an OTP and you can buy the exam there, try to attend the exam. Another thing in the exam where all the eh, details are provided for how to attend the exam over there, it has the email address for study buddy. It also has my contact number. I'm the one who coordinate the exam section as well. So uh, once you give the exam, if you have any doubts, you can email me uh, and I can get in touch with you and I can help you clear your doubts as well. Okay, yeah, I'm accepting students for mentorship, but uh, I do mentorship only for students who are with, with study buddy. So those who have already taken the study buddy package for only for them, I do the mentorship. Okay, everyone, all the best. Do well, I know you all are preparing well, try these mock exams that will further help you to understand where which area you are getting going wrong and the review will further help you get stronger with the topics. Okay, take care guys, bye.